Welcome to Shorway English Live Lectures. Today's topic is Highlight Correct Summary from the PTE Listening Section. In this video, you will find detailed explanations of each and every step, proven methods that are known to work, and you will get some very solid practice. So make sure that you watch this video till the very end. And if you have not already done so, don't forget to create your free account on SureWayEnglish.com and sign up for the free PTE course and many other resources. Let's go to question number one. There's a lot of party that goes on. There's some really mind-numbing business that goes on. So it's a little bit business and it's a whole lot show. These party conventions are two different animals, really. The first is to do the business of the conventions, which is get a nominee out there. Yes, we all know who it's going to be, but they have to do that. That's under the party rules and the way they've set it and, and how it all works. They've got to go and they've got to vote. So that's the official business. The rest of it is about putting on a face that voters will get an idea of who this candidate is and, and what this party is about. The fact of the matter is these are important for these candidates, whether you're the president or the challenger, to say, this is what I'm about. The party is presenting itself, be they Republicans or Democrats, to the general public. Number one, it, it, it helps excite their base, the people that are going to vote anyway, or who might say, oh, it's too cold, it's too hot, I'm not going to the polls. Uh, so it's about their base, but it's also about that minuscule number of swing voters that are still trying to figure out who they're going to vote for. Delegates are chosen depending on the state, either through a caucus. Sometimes they are picked at state party conventions. Generally what happens is a delegate runs in a primary and they say, I'm Matt Smith and I want to be a delegate for Mitt Romney. Okay. Uh... Just take a few few more seconds and decide on which you think is the correct answer choice. All right, let, let's have a look at the answer. So the correct answer was choice number two that the party conventions are organized to announce a party nominee and formally present the candidate to the general public. It helps the undecided people make up their mind on the party. Delegates are also chosen during the party conventions. Okay, now let's go ahead and review this question in detail and understand how we arrived at this particular answer choice. So, this is what the audio was. This is the text of it. Um, I hope you were taking notes and what you see in bold is the important points. So the first important point was that the business of conventions is to get a nominee out there. Okay, the other important point was it's about their base but also about the minuscule number of swing voters who are still trying to figure out who they're going to vote for. So minuscule means small number, swing means, swing voter means the voters uh, who haven't yet decided who. So who can swing either way okay uh, and the other important point was how the delegates are chosen right so if you have uh, got these uh, main points you know somehow uh, noted down uh, or you know when you were listening if you took these notes then when you look at the answer choices okay uh, now let's look at the first one. The party conventions are meant to throw a party to the people so that they become excited about the party and vote for it in the election. Some people who have not made up their mind or on who to vote for wait for these conventions to make up their mind. Now, nowhere in the passage it says that people wait for these conventions. Okay, or that it's just to throw a party to the people. So, so this is nowhere covered there. The second one, the party conventions are organized to announce a party nominee, formally present the candidate, helps undecided people make up their mind, and that delegates are chosen. 
So these were all the three points that were covered in the passage. The third one, party conventions are organized to announce a party nominee and formally present the party's plan. Now, it never says that party's plan is to be presented, okay? And it also never says that delegates are chosen through a caucus only. It says delegates can be chosen in different methods. And the last one, the party conventions are organized to announce party's policies so for upcoming elections as well as to decide. So it doesn't say that. So in, in all of these questions, you know, where you have to make choices, you have to base your choice on exactly on what's, uh, you know, said uh, in the lecture, what has been said in the audio. Okay, don't try to make conclusions, don't try to make assumptions. Yeah, so some of the choices are obviously incorrect where they say something which is totally not covered. Okay, so for example, people wait for these conventions. So you immediately know that it's wrong. So, uh, as I said earlier, the important skill here is to take down the notes and to be able to identify what the important points were. Okay, feel free to go back and, you know, uh, go back in the video and try this question again if you want to. Let's go to question number two now. This is the first of the Houston Film Lectures, a series of lectures from the National University of Ireland's Houston School of Film and Digital Media in Galway. The lecture series features leading film directors, writers, producers, cinematographers and academics. In this lecture, Irish feminist filmmaker Pat Murphy looks at what are the influences on her as a filmmaker, the people, the events, the ideas and the contexts that have influenced her work. Pat Murphy grew up in Northern Ireland and studied in London at Hornsey College of Art and the Royal College of Art in the 1970s. Her films Maeve and Devlin and in 2001 Nora starring Susan Lynch and Ewan McGregor have made her one of Ireland's most important filmmakers. Okay, so that was the lecture, that was the audio. Uh, take a quick few seconds and decide on the answer choice. If you need more time, you can always pause the video, all right? Okay, let's check the answer now. So it was choice number three, that the lecture series is organized by Ireland's Hurston School and the current lecture is by Pat Murphy, who will speak about her ideas and influences. Pat Murphy is one of the greatest filmmakers of all times in Ireland. Uh, apologies, in the slide, the spellings uh, are incorrect. It's, it says Pat Murphy, but it's Pat Murphy, so sorry about that. But the correct answer choice is number three. Now let's go and try to understand why this is correct choice. So uh, this was the audio and it was quite short. It says that uh, it's first of the Hurston Film Lectures, a series of lectures from Ireland's Houston School of Film and Digital Media in Galway, which means that you know it was organized by Houston School. And then it talks about that in this lecture, Irish feminist filmmaker Pat Murphy looks at what the influences on her were as a filmmaker. And then in the end, you know, there's a key point which says uh, something, you know, one of her films made her one of Ireland's most important filmmakers. So so when you start listening to any audio, it's important to, you know, quickly uh, take some good notes. Uh, just write, e even if you just write, you know, one or two words. So for example, when you were listening to this, you could have written, to capture the first point, lectures by Houston School. That's it. And third, first lecture, Pat Murphy. Okay. And then Pat Murphy, most important filmmaker. So that's how you capture the most important points. Now, in the light of these key points, let's look at the answer choices. So the first one says that the series is organized by Pat Murphy. But no, the series is organized by the school. And Pat Murphy is 
invited as a speaker. Okay. The second choice is organized by the school which is correct and Pat Murphy has been invited to the series as a special guest as she is considered the greatest filmmaker of all times. Now, she is not considered the greatest filmmaker of all times. She is considered one of the greatest filmmakers of all times. So see, this is how they try to confuse you in the multiple choices. If you look at the choice number three, it's pretty much the same, but in this, which is correct, it says that is one of the greatest filmmakers of all times in Ireland. So your choice, as I said earlier, has to be based upon something that is, you know, entirely on what's said there. So just because it says, uh, it says one of the greatest, don't confuse it by greatest of all times. And the last choice, the lecture series is organized by Ireland's Houston School and current lecture is by Pat, Pat, Pat Murphy who will speak about her writer's influence is widely regarded as the greatest filmmaker of all times in Ireland. So again, the same mistake as the second leg second point and again uh, we are sorry for the spelling mistakes in the name there it's not, not Pat Murphy it's Pat Murphy but uh, irrespective of that I hope you were able to understand how we arrived at this correct answer choice so always remember take notes when you're listening okay so try to remember or understand what the lecture is about in your notes try to write down what the key points are and then when you go and look at the choices uh, first of all remove the ones that are wrong and then double check the one that you identify as the correct choice alright uh, if you need a break you can pause the video right now and come back to it or let's go to question number three I think the reason people feel a connection to monarchy specifically and it's the sort of thing that they might take their children to go and see is that you get a profound sense of something that goes back generation and generation and generation. So it's a living link to a very, very different age from the world we now live in. And I think people are, are you know, interested and engaged in what that tells us about this place and this community and the way that it's the way that it's changed so I think I think people have a sort of historic sense of that but I think it's very important to do uh, what you're suggesting which is to bring out a living sense of history too in our communities and actually to have the history of how we changed and what we feel uh, about that and I think we've had too much anxiety about that and I think this is a particular feature of post-war Britain okay so I hope you understood that passage well and let's take a few quick seconds to identify what you think is the right choice pause it pop pop pause the video if you need a bit more time okay let's have a look at the answer now so that is the very first answer choice that people feel connection to monarchy because it gives them a link to an era gone by and helps them see how the community has changed over time. It is important to have a living sense of history as the anxiety over change is common in Britain. Okay, well, let's go and see how we got to this choice. So this is what the passage was. So it, it's someone talking about you know people feeling a connection to monarchy. Monarchy means you know the rule of the king and queen and specifically in this passage in Britain and how that gives a sense of connection to history and how things have changed over a period of time. So the first key point here was that you get a profound sense of something that goes back generation which means you know a historical connection. A living link to a very very different age from the world we now live in and I think people are you know interested and engaged in what that tells us about this place and community and the way that it has changed so it means that it's it's like a link that has never broken okay and uh, you know following that link 
we can see how we have changed, how the community has changed over a period of time. And then it says that people have too much anxiety about that. That means the change, okay, how the sense of change. And I think this is particular feature of post-war Britain. All right, so uh, if these were the key points, then again, look at the choices now. Um, start from the fourth one. People want a living link with the past and therefore they like monarchy. This helps their children understand why Britain is anxious after war. Now, in the passage, they do mean, they do talk about children and they talk about, you know, the connection with the history, but it's not that they want to, the children to specifically understand why Britain is anxious after war. Third point, people want the children to understand how the monarchy has changed and people in Britain are very anxious about the changes. So while the second point is correct that people in Britain are anxious about those changes post-war, but the first part that they want the children to understand how monarchy has changed, okay, that, that's not correct. Uh, they, they want the children to have a sense of history and monarchy is one way of doing that. Second point, people feel connection to monarchy because they can take the children to see the monarchy this helps the community understand how the monarch monarchs have changed and deal with post-war anxiety. No, it's it's not about dealing with post-war anxiety, and it's not just that they feel connection; they want to take the children to see them. The correct choice is number one: people feel connection to monarchy because it gives them a link to an era gone by and helps them see how the community or the society has changed over time. And it's important to have a living sense of history as the anxiety over change is common in Britain. So now this is perfectly correct because it covers uh, the, the points that it mentions were the ones which were covered and just what was covered in the passage. So don't be fooled by other choices which seem similar. Once you have made this choice, you know, you can always go back uh, here, you know, and again with compare it to your notes and make sure that your choice is correct all right now uh, let's go to question number four in the women against violence against women movement I took to the streets to take back the night. I went to government to agitate for funding when the center was running out of money. And when that didn't work, we held car washes to raise money for the center. We went to local libraries, to schools, to courts to advocate for and support our clients. We spoke about violence against women. We went to police stations and hospitals. But most importantly, we worked with rape survivors. We were, this was the, the 70s. Okay. Um, let's take a couple of seconds to pick a choice. All right. And now uh, let's see what the correct answer was. So that was second, that women against violence, against women movement people, raised funds by holding car washes, went to libraries, schools and courts to spread the message and also worked with rape survivors. Let's have a look at what the audio was. So this is the text, okay? So it starts by uh, a woman, you know, the lady telling that in the Women Against Violence Against Women movement, what they did. And then she mentioned some key points that they held car washes, went to library schools, etc. They spoke about violence, went to police stations, hospitals, and they worked with the survivors. So uh, remember when you're taking notes, you know, you don't have to write the full sentences. You can just write down some of the key points. So you could have written car wash, uh, library schools, then spoke against violence and then worked with survivors, things like that. Something to just, when you're comparing, when you're looking at the choices after hearing, 
then you know you can match and see which is which fits what you have listened most appropriately now if you look at the choices okay so the first one to raise money the government asked the women to support the center now it nowhere says that the government specifically asked so you can eliminate them second women against violence against women movement people raise funds by holding car washes went to libraries schools and courts to spread the message and also worked with rape survivors absolutely all, all of this are covered in the passage so we know this is the correct answer but before you know you hit OK and go to the next question it's always wise to also look at the other choices so look at number three now women against violence against women movement supported the center when it ran out of money that doesn't say that you know this center ran out of money so wrong choice fourth to raise money to support the campaign protested against the government and took the campaign to no it doesn't say that they did all of these to protest against the government right okay they did all these things to raise money and then did that as part of their campaign so again this is the wrong choice so now with the wrong choices eliminated you can be sure that number two is exactly what you need because it is the correct answer so with that we come to the end of this lecture don't forget to sign up for a free course on shareawayenglish.com all the best